see trees of green. Welcome to Master Trade Rock. Ron been very influential in my evolution as a tree grower. To start with, I was working in a logging native hardwood logging crew, and I felt that we should be able to grow trees to complement or supplement. So I had visions of being able to convince farmers to grow trees for timber on their property which would have other benefits as well but I found that it was very farmers were generally very unreceptive to my idea of planting trees on their farms and I put that down to the fact that a we're only one or two generations out from the land clearance and family, family peer groups have a lot of influence on how the younger generation looks at them. My idea was to demonstrate that we could grow these trees and I had to buy land to do that and I bought Taggarty in 94 and dug planting timber trees and over time with Ron's influence and other people I've evolved into growing trees for biodiversity and other interesting things like honey food for sugar gliders and so on. I had a row of shiny gum which were not doing so well at my place and I got Phil Rag to fall them for me and there was sugar gliders and possums going everywhere. I couldn't believe what I was seeing and so I decided to keep some of those trees for the wildlife. In my philosophy, there's some things that people might find interesting. I don't believe in government grant money for planting trees. I believe that the government should think about the market rather than just handing out money. Timber forestry, private farmers who are growing trees for timber don't make much money at the moment unless they like Rowan and me and we add value by having the trees milled and we sell the timber. Now why is the market so poor for logs? Well the government is a major player in the market they sell vast quantities of logs from native forest and this pins our prices for private growers and we spend money to grow the trees. The government doesn't have to do that. It's all for free and they sell it cheaply. This is from a tree that I grew on Taggarty. This is flooring in the house in Melbourne and the people were ecstatic when it was laid. It's currently in this picture. The timber on the left has already had the sealer put on it and the right is the raw timber. Very satisfying 20 year old tree. Now the thing with farm forestry is that you can do it small scale. There's people around who will handle small quantities of logs. The Rowan touched on the fact that all the main sawmills have closed down in this area. We're losing a lot of infrastructure here in the northeast 
saw my own true colors. Very difficult for me to get my lodge milled at the moment. I've got one private miller who will do a truckload at a time, but he won't, he won't mill large quantities for me because he just doesn't have time. The other thing that I did, because I believe in farm forestry passionately, I got involved with a farmer in Highlands and we set up joint venture. He, he put up the land and he got some grant money for salinity funding so that paid for the seedlings and I did the management of the trees from the planting to the final harvest. Currently the, one of those joint ventures is being thinned for firewood. It's about five years late for thinning but there's been no market for the thinning. Now it's going out for firewood and I'm making $30 a tonne net. To me, the prune trees that are left, when they finish growing to a harvest, they should be worth a couple of hundred dollars each, at least. Here's a th this slide is food for thought. How do we value our trees? Who would ever imagine that a tree could be worth this much? This scientist explains the value. We, you know, in the old days the trees were a nuisance and they were to be got rid of so we can grow more grass. So how do you people value trees? You will all have different values for your trees and if you plant one tree, you make a difference in the world. If you manage the tree, you make a big difference in the world. My daughter, who's at the handlebars of the quad bike, helped me with some biodiversity planting what I did after the forestry trees were established I started to plant native shrubs a belt round the edge of each plantation and my daughter helped me what Rowan has taught me is that there's much more to tree growing than timber and money and when you see fungus growing off a stump that you, from a tree that you cut down, it's pretty wonderful. And this dog died from a snake bite, but he, he had a few years living with me at Tagaty, and he was a city dog, but he absolutely loved coming to work with me and he was great company, very good natured dog and I think the smile on both our faces indicates what the tree growing lifestyle is all about. I hope that you people will get some inspiration from Rowan and me, some of you have some beautiful plantations already. Stuart and Jenny, you've got some amazing trees. And there's other people, Chris and Ros, they have some wonderful plantings nearby my place. We'll go and look at a property this afternoon that was ravaged by the black Saturday fires and you'll see it, the transformation of trees in the landscape. I think to myself, what a wonderful